After four seasons with the Chicago Bears, quarterback Mitch Trubisky could be on the move. It seems as if Bears fans all over either hate Trubisky or they love him, and oddly enough, I think that there's a valid argument for both sides of that. Following a stellar 2018 Pro Bowl season, the media started to talk about Mitch taking a big step in 2019. Unfortunately, as we all know though, he didn't, as the team went 8-8 eight and eight and missed out on the playoffs. Late this past season, however, we saw a glimpse of a potential revival for Trubisky. But now that his rookie contract is done, where will Trubisky go and is he even worth it? Before the video starts though, we're going to be doing our first giveaway once we hit 100k. All you guys need to do is take a screenshot of you subscribed with the bell notification on and put it on your Instagram story. Then follow us and tag us both for your chance to win an NFL jersey of your choice. The story of Mitch Trubisky in 2020 is an odd one to say the least. Mitch started the season pretty well, and I think that he should have continued to play. I was extremely concerned and just confused when in week three, they decided to bench him for Nick Foles. Now at this point in the season, it's pretty clear that the Bears have been trying to establish a run first offense. And once they put Nick Foles in, it was clear that they wanted to flip to a pass heavy offense. And personally, Personally, I just think that absolutely ruined their momentum that they were building on that run first offense. It just, it did not work. You know, Nick Foles did not play as everyone wanted him to play. I mean, Nick Foles, as you all know, has been relatively disappointing since his Super Bowl runs with the Eagles as he's been tossed around to the Jaguars and now the Bears. Foles ended up passing for 10 touchdowns and eight interceptions in his time starting before ultimately getting injured that would allow Mitch Trubisky to come back on the field and start for the Bears for the rest of the season. Mitch was clearly the better quarterback this season despite what others would think. While neither of these quarterbacks were playing out of their mind, it's important to note that Mitch was able to play well enough to slip his team into the playoffs. The Chicago Bears season came to a close in the wildcard round when they lost to the New Orleans Saints 21-9. Of course, the game must forever be remembered for the iconic MVP Mitch Trubisky game that was on Nickelodeon. That put an end to the Bears' 8-8 eight eight season and what could be the final year with Trubisky in town. Chicago decided to decline his fifth-year option last season, which will mark the end of his rookie deal. However, in the post-game interview after the loss to the Saints, Trubisky said, Yeah, I think, um, I think I could definitely see myself back here next year. Obviously, a lot of that's out of my control, um, but it just... It feels like home, and it feels like we have unfinished business. Mitch Trubisky is coming off of one of his best seasons in the pros. Trubisky played in 10 games while splitting time with Nick Foles, passing for 2,055 yards and 16 touchdowns and 8 interceptions. He finished with a 93.5 passer rating, the second best of his career. Additionally, his 67% completion percentage was the best of his career. He went 6-3 as a starter. Of course, that is one season removed from a disappointing year three performance. Trubisky went 8-7 and seven and declined in nearly every statistical category from the season prior. He had 3,138 yards and only 17 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. His passer rating went down over 12 points and completion percentage went down over 4% from his stellar 2018 Pro Bowl season. Trubisky looked like he may be a future star quarterback just two seasons ago. The Bears were one of the best teams in the league and Trubisky had a great 11-3 record starting. He passed for career highs, 3,223 yards and 24 touchdowns to 12 interceptions. His 95.4 passer rating was the best mark of his career and his 66.6 .6 completion percentage was the best before 2020. For Trubisky, this was a huge improvement from his rookie campaign. He took over in his first year and started in 12 games, going 4-8 and eight and passing for 2,193 yards and 7 touchdowns to 7 interceptions. While learning the ropes of the pros, he had a 59.4% completion percentage and a 77.5 passer rating. 
Mitski was a hot topic after his redshirt junior season at North Carolina, going on to be named third team All ACC after passing for 3,748 yards and 30 touchdowns to six interceptions while completing 68% of his passes. The year was his only as a full time starter for the Tar Heels, taking a lesser role in his first three seasons in Chapel Hill. The 6 foot 2, 222 pound pro style quarterback was expected to have a ton of upside in the pros. The spread style offense that Larry Fedora utilized was expected to perfectly translate into the league. The big downside, though, was his lack of tape after only starting one year, something the Chicago Bears scouts looking back at it now would probably want more of before taking him second overall. His pro comparison couldn't have been any better. Ryan Tannehill, a guy who spent time with the Miami Dolphins not being used correctly by his head coach in Adam Gates. I think Trubisky has a close parallel to that in Matt Nagy. Give Trubisky a mastermind like Sean Payton and we could see a Tannehill-like turnaround. Now, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that Mitch Trubisky didn't see a huge drop in passing yard production after his 2018 Pro Bowl season, but what he did see significantly less of was his efficiency with running the ball. He went from rushing over 400 yards in 2018 to rushing sub 200 the following two seasons. I truly believe that he just took away a dimension of his play that makes him a lot more predictable to these defenses now. I also want to note that I don't think that Mitch Trubisky's struggles were all his fault. I'm not trying to give the man excuses because I know and I saw plenty of plays where he was absolutely atrocious. But what's important to note is that the Bears did finish with the 20th best offensive line in 2020 and even in prior seasons their offensive line hasn't really been a priority and they really need to work on that if they want to give their quarterback more time in the pocket to make these plays and extend them. Another factor is Trey Burton. I truly believe he was an absolute stud in 2018 with Mitch Trubisky and was a really big factor. And after he left at the end of the 2018 season, they kind of struggled with that position until picking up Jimmy Graham this past offseason. Now, I'm not going to ignore the fact that he's had Allen Robinson all this time, and Allen Robinson has been fantastic. I think that he's a top wide receiver in the league, but unfortunately, I just don't think the chemistry has ever fully been there, and I don't think Mitch has really been able to fully utilize Allen Robinson. Robinson. And of course, the first person you probably look to when teams are struggling is the head coach. And I believe Matt Nagy deserves a little bit of blame here for the struggle of the Bears as a whole and maybe just Mitch Trubisky's production because Matt Nagy brought in Nick Foles in the offseason. This was a controversial move. It was seen as, okay, Chicago might need a new quarterback. This is going to put a fire under Mitch's butt. But I think that this just shook Trubisky's confidence and really just kind of took the chemistry that he already had with the team and kind of shook it all up. Now, the struggles of Trubisky and the team overall is not entirely the fault of Nagy, but it's important to note that the performance increased once he gave up play calling to Bill Lazor. Matt Nagy was calling all of the offensive plays and kind of running it through Nagy's offense instead of his offensive coordinators, which could attribute to some of the ill-advised plays that he was telling Trubisky to run. I think that Mitch probably needs to leave Chicago. It's unfortunate to say, and I really hate to say it, but I do think that Chicago ruined Mitch Trubisky. I never thought that he was an out of his mind player, but I think that he needs to get out of Chicago if he wants to redevelop his career and just, you know, try to be successful. I could see a team maybe like Washington or New England that could be a great place for him. Both teams finished with a top six offensive line in 2020 that would allow him to, you know, have more time back in that pocket. Now, New England is a reasonable option, but what's important to note is I don't think that that would truly 100% work out because if Mitch Trubisky can't make it work with Allen Robinson, Taylor Gabriel, and all the other weapons he's had over the years, I don't think think that he's going to be able to get it done with Jacoby Myers, Demir Bird, and Julian Edelman, and Nikhil Harry if he's going to step it up this year. However, Mitch seemed to have flamed out this past season as Bears fans all over were clearly disappointed with his play. But a bright future could very much be possible if he's put in the right situation. And who knows, we might see a Ryan Tannehill-like revival of his career. Thanks for watching, and again, if you want a chance to win an NFL jersey of your choice, take a screenshot of you subscribed with the bell notification on and put it on your Instagram story. Then follow us and tag us both for a chance to win an NFL jersey of your choice.